This is a 3D printer. This is a spray painting gun. And this is PARS. This is my prototyping box. Inside of it is all this. Prototypes from tens of different projects over the last year. But out of all of these attempted designs over the last year, the project that finally came out the best was this one. This is a spray painting gun. It's a very simple device that allows it so when you pull the trigger, spray paint comes out the front. It also means very easy to shake it without losing your grip. And also in the winter months, your hands don't freeze up when they touch the cold metal of the painting can. So today, I'm gonna to show you how I made it. Let's go back to the beginning. I started off with these two extremely basic models. This was built for a wood shop where you could put spray paint cans on the wall. And it had two screw holes right here. This is the general model for what the final print would become. And you can see the general idea does work, but the problem with this is the, the handle snaps extremely easily. And overall, the grip wasn't great and the handle was... My goal was to make a proper, easy to use version and make it easier to print on most printers. I, want to add a ring, I wanted to add a ring hole and proper grooves than the handle, remove the unnecessary side logo to reduce the chance of print failure, add a secondary mount system to improve stability that attaches through a nuts and bolts system, and add a circular base so the system can lie flat on its bottom. And of course, add my own logo. Okay, moving on to... Version 2. This new handle worked great in regards to grip and control of the can. Though the handle did snap, I believe that this would be easily fixed by pro properly reinforcing the handle to be able to control the grip force easier. The side nuts and bolts looked and felt great, although it would appear that one nut was modelled backwards and wouldn't work at all. Next up was this, version 3. The main changes are properly reinforcing the handle which did later break, adding a logo on the bottom, and fixing the re reverse nut on one side. Next up was version 4. Version 4 was modelled around building the proper connection system to allow a proper base to attach here onto this mounting system. One of the right sides seems to have shifted too far away from the centre and doesn't line up with the nut hole. The main column is too close to the spray can, leading to bending instead of a flush fit. So because none of that worked, version 5. Version 5 had the two holes relatively consistent. And this was the first test that worked great with the, the V3 base. Because this works so well, we were able to move on to version 6 and version 7. Version 0.7 works by having extremely small threads inside of this little bit. And you, when you place V6 in between the holder and the bolt, you'd have two of them obviously, you get this general structure. But as you can see here, there is one problem. Even with these two bolts in place, there isn't really enough stability on the bottom side. There's way too much flex between these connection points. We also had a problem with V6, that this area kept snapping. You see, the surface area that contacts between the long, long connector piece and this piece that connects to the base is actually incredibly small. To fix this, we built V8 and V9. V8 has an improved amount of surface area as we built a triangular structure within it. That means the point of connection is much stronger here and it can survive a lot more strain if the base starts to bend. V9 was improved by adding this extra little hole at the bottom for an additional screw. This means that there is no flex at the bottom of the connection. After I'd finally gotten the general structure down, I wanted to improve the mechanism of the structure itself, as even on the later models and later versions, I kept getting handle snapping, where the handle would snap off after you pulled the trigger on the paint. So I printed out this. This is an inside view 
of how the actual spray painting mechanism works, and it's also printed with this in place. So, when the handle is pulled backwards, this goes forwards and presses down on the spray paint can. After quite a lot of design, I did actually sketch up what I thought was a far superior angle mechanism that involved the handle being attached to a centralized half gear that would turn this way, leaving this to turn this way, only to realize I needed to do it in more of a free gear situation where this gear, the handle gear, would turn this way, this centralized gear would turn left, and then finally, the third gear with the, with the nozzle press on the end would turn down and turn right and press the paint can. Unfortunately, even after a lot of small scale testing like this, I was not able to get a mechanism that I felt was reliable enough to put into this kind of product. Though I definitely could see some potential for a later version down the line where I have access to more specific machinery than a 3D printer. But a 0.4mm nozzle on this just doesn't quite cut it. Finally, after about a month, I was able to finish off this. Version 1.1. This is the first piece of the final product. It printed successfully with very high infill density. I found that this new, slightly more engineered handle with a better base, fits lovely in the hand, and also has never snapped or even bended during testing. It also includes the logo at the top. After the success of printing that, I was feeling very confident, and I remodeled up a new connection system to get this handle fitting right through here in a nice and smooth motion. This was to ensure you got the full range of motion, as before, the handle did contact the connector and give you very little range of motion. But now it can actually go through the bottom of it and ensures you get a great print every time. Unfortunately, in order to achieve this, we had to build these giant cylinder brackets on the outside. And these, while technically functional, um, didn't exactly fare well with any screws you tried to put in there. Yeah, that's about as far as it goes. You see the lens cap hits on the edge of this cylinder when it's trying to thread down. Like that. That means the cylinders are too big. But we can't make them too small, or else the handle won't be able to fit through. So it was back to the drawing board for the connector. The 1.3 connector worked great. The screw was able to fully go down all the way to the bottom and connect to the base. As you can see, instead of shrinking the cylinder supports, I was able to shrink them vertically and shift them forward, meaning they didn't come as much into contact with the region around these bottom rings. I also redesigned the screws. Instead of using these large bulb-headed ones, these, while awesome for bigger projects, didn't exactly work here. As when you have your handle, your finger on the trigger and are moving it back and forth, the top of your hand can rub against this large cap here. In order to solve this problem, I made these. The version 1.4 caps. They keep all the same strength as their big brother, but they are way smaller in regards to cap size. And never brush against your finger while you're pulling. Now all that was left was to get our 0.9 base, our 0.3 connector, and then do a final build of the entire thing. And there we have it, one finely assembled spray assist. I really hope you enjoyed this guide. And if you want to make one for yourself at home, the files will be available um, at my blog 